guys, we're down here in the Kent, Des Moines area of Washington today. I am touring some folks that are thinking of buying a home in this area, and one of the reasons is they wanted to be really close to SeaTac because that's where they work. So um, we are looking in Kent, Des Moines, a little bit in the SeaTac area, and I just wanted to kind of drive you around, give you a sense of what it's like. We're looking at homes in the around the $600,000 price point, so uh, you'll see some condominium townhomes type of thing in the lakes, which is a beautiful neighborhood, but it does have pretty strict HOA rules, like no rentals. So if you wanted to do uh, like a house hack or a rental or buy one and then rent it out and you move to the next one, that would be a problem for at least that particular development. Um, we're looking at one right here, which is an older home that has... Uh, like an unfinished basement so that gives an idea of extra space and possibly having a tenant that would enter in in the bottom and have their own little setup down there and then be able to um, you know rent that out possibly or have a larger family and then the other house that we are looking at is uh, that was a, a a townhouse like an attached townhouse that was in the 450 price point it did have four bedrooms, but it was uh, farther out. It was by uh, some electrical wires and things like that. So even though it was uh, pretty nice on the inside, it was a little dated, but they had done some updating for sure. Um, it seemed like it, it felt like it was more of a rental area. It had some high electric wires nearby and just wasn't as attractive. So anyway, I, I'm going to drive you around. You'll see some of the scenery, some of the main drags, and then some of these neighborhood areas. So you can kind of get a sense of what it's like to live in Kent to Des Moines area down here near SeaTac um, and kind of into your, your starter home, your first home uh, price point around uh, 600,000. It's a gorgeous day here at the lakes in Kent. This is one of my favorite condominium townhouse, individual home developments down here. I actually have another client who bought one last year and I'm here again with some new folks. So I just wanted to show you what you could get for your money. This one is in the mid 600s and um, buyers, it's a good time to be negotiating if you see something that's been on the market for a little while. Don't be afraid to ask for a little something extra when you make your offer. Okay, this is in Kent. We're at the lakes. There are a lot of different condominiums here, each with their own little HOAs. This is a detached home. So it's a single family home, four bedrooms. It's for sale for 630,000. And um, I'm just gonna kind of get an idea for what it's like on the inside. So huge vaulted ceilings here. When you come in, there's a coat closet. You can go back into the kitchen. So nice quartz type counters here, stainless steel appliances, a uh, nice corner window looking out into the backyard and the lakes has these great paths. So there are a lot of uh, dog walkers. You can see there's a bench. So really nice uh, outdoor areas. Here with the chandeliers, you can see this is kind of set off as a uh, informal kitchen dining room table type area. There's a fireplace in the living room. And then outdoors, nice big deck, patio, just a little bit of lawn, some places to plant whatever you desire and uh, neighbors going walking out there in the back. Uh, toward here we have the garage and the powder room. Oops, <laughs> hello, there I am. Uh, here's the garage. Space. Here's the powder room space. Okay, so we're driving through Kent right now. We're crossing over some railroad tracks. So this is a more affordable area of Seattle and you can get uh, quite a bit more home for the money. We're down south, so we're near um, Federal Way, kind of the King County, Snohomish County line. We are definitely within commuting distance of Seattle and Bellevue. 
And the nice thing about being here in the south end, you can kind of go up either freeway. So you can go up 405 if you're going east into Bellevue, or you can go up I-5 if you're going west into Seattle. And here's uh, the Mill Creek Bulldogs. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, we were kind of in that industrial area starting out with, but then we get up into more residential homes pretty quickly here and we have uh, this nice hill that we're going up. And one of the wonderful things about living here in the Seattle area in the Pacific Northwest is that uh, we do have a lot of hills which provide great territorial views. Really, you get a sense of the space and being in, uh, you know, not just boxed in by your neighbors, but you can see for miles around, you can see trees and sunsets and mountains and water and things like that when you get up on some of these hills. So obviously we're on a pretty busy street right now. So these are not gonna be like the nicest of properties here on the busy street, but you can tell, I'll see if we can uh, kind of show, when you go off into the side streets, uh, you get some nicer, just quieter, residential feeling, suburban feeling homes. And there are certainly some that are rentals. I saw one that was boarded up further back. And we tend to just get a mix in um, some of these more affordable areas. It's more likely to be rentals. Here's East Hill Elementary. And also on the busier streets, on the more you know close to retail, close to industrial type stuff, there's more likely to be rentals as well. Those just aren't as, camera head. as premium. But you can see here, kind of get an idea of what some of the shops are. So we have Starbucks, of course, Popeye's Chicken, uh, Happy Donuts, Northwest Smokes. There's a Fred Meyer, which is kind of our grocery store and kind of all things store. Uh, 7-Eleven up ahead, Nails. So kind of a combination of bigger name brands, credit tenants, and also smaller mom and pop uh, local businesses, things like that. Popeye's Louisiana Chicken. I went to a school in North Carolina and they were all about the fried chicken in the South. I don't feel like it's as much of an institution around here. We grew up um, with Kentucky Fried Chicken being our main fried chicken option, but now we have Zell's Chicken, uh, I guess we have Popeye's, and so there are more <laughs> fried chicken options now than there used to be, um, although I think we have a lot of different international foods. Pho, uh, P-H-O, is a Vietnamese soup that's uh, popular here. Uh, kind of a lot of Asian fusion type of restaurants, Thai food. Uh, there's Taco Bell, their new ghostly white and purple logo. Don't like it that much. <laughs> AutoZone, curry and kebab. So like Indian food, Greek food. Uh, there's India Village over there, that one's called. Subway. McDonald's, Self Storage, Firestone Tire, there's a laundromat, there's a big gas station. And then you can see, like right next to that, we have some townhomes, the, the Groves, the Bower Apartments. And so, like I was saying, when we're close to this more shopping, working type of areas, the first phase of residential tends to be more um, rental or less expensive and then as we get deeper into the suburbs we tend to find more houses more bigger houses more expensive houses that type of thing here's a church what's it called lutheran church of the cross and a lutheran school lutherans uh, were really uh, a protestant denomination that came over from a lot of Scandinavian countries, they really liked the fishing out here. German countries really liked the farming out here. So I think uh, like Minnesota has a lot of Lutherans 
and uh, the Pacific Northwest has a lot of new of Lutherans as well. Unique selection of pumpkins and gourds. This is Kent East Hill Nursery. We'll get you growing, super cute. So uh, again, unlike the rest of Seattle, uh, as we get out into the countryside a little bit more, land is less expensive and you will see more businesses like garden centers. This looks like they're selling potted plants at this nursery, but you'll find places where they're actually growing the plants as well. So they're rooting cuttings in the ground and raising the plants, which they then dig and put in a, a retail nursery location like this. But uh, that's certainly more common uh, here to the south and the east of the Seattle and Bellevue area, where we're, you know, suburban bordering on rural. Look at the beautiful trees. It's October right now. It's 56 degrees outside, so it's still pretty warm. We haven't had our first frost yet this year. It's mid-October, but we are starting to get some beautiful leaf color, which I love. You can see it's a little overcast. We actually haven't had too much rain lately, which is nice. Um, whenever it rains a lot, it tends to wash the leaves off the trees faster, but when it's uh, drier, they stay crisp and beautiful for longer. They're like our flowers of the autumn. <laughs> Another church here on the main road. And you can see now how quickly we've sort of transitioned into this undeveloped area. Kind of, you can look at the map. We've got a lot of green space over there. It's like park entrance here. East Ridge Baptist Church. And so some more houses, but in, you know, deep in Seattle and the city, you're not going to see such big parks for the most part. Smaller pocket parks are more common. Here's the back of a development. Wandering Creek apartment living. Here's another 7-Eleven, QFC, more apartments. State Farm, some office rental back there. So if you guys are here looking for homes and you're trying to kind of look online and see what's for sale, you know, you could In see a house. Mile, take a slight right turn onto 148th Avenue Southeast. You could see a house that looks nice from the pictures, but make sure you're using like Google Street View or uh, some, uh, sometimes they'll have some drone pictures and things like that. You want to get an idea of what's around the house and typically um, things that detract from value are uh, like less expensive property, apartment buildings, uh, backing up to the grocery store or other businesses, uh, busy streets. And what's going to make it nicer is having parks and green spaces. You can see on the map we're coming up to another green space here. Uh, there are some power lines that make that's a concern. People often don't like that as well. Um, but a lot of times, especially with new construction, you'll find these developments are out where they can get big swaths of land, oftentimes like prior farmland that they are able to buy some acreage and just develop it. So Uh, sometimes that can be closer to power lines and things that you know may or may not be a concern for you. I have some clients that are talking about you know buying an electric meter so they can measure that type of thing. And some people are like, "Hey, I'm in the city. <laughs> There's going to be cell phone towers and electric lines. It doesn't bother me." Take a slight right turn onto 148th Avenue Southeast. So I you know I think it's one of those things that can be a trade-off, and you just have to see what you can get for your money and um, you know what your goals are in a quarter mile turn right onto 146th avenue southeast sometimes things that bother one person don't bother others and vice versa and now look we're out in the country we've got little livestock fencing down there i couldn't quite see what the livestock were Right, nice home, Avenue, fully Southeast. fenced. Then the destination it looks is on your right. pretty fancy, but then like next door to it, they have this little guy, unfancy. This 
is Meridian Furs neighborhood. In 900 feet, the destination is on your right, 25,000 and 7146th Avenue Southeast. So here we are, we're gonna take a look at some something for sale in this neighborhood. We call it Des Moines with an S in <laughs> the Washington state rather than Des Moines, Iowa, where we don't pronounce the S. Uh, so here's the Showwear Center. They've got hockey. Go past this light, then at the next one, turn left. Passing under Highway 167 here. And so we're a little bit south of the airport. We're heading west toward Puget Sound. And so we're close to light, turn left onto Washington Avenue North. Sort of Federal Way, which is the southernmost part of King County. King County is Washington's uh, most populous county where we've got Seattle, Washington, and Bellevue, Washington, and SeaTac International Airport, as well as the Boeing airplane manufacturing company which is a big part of the economy in this area as well and then as we get south of those areas kind of where we are it becomes a little more mixed south of seattle there's a lot of uh, industrial type of stuff uh, building manufacturing that type of a thing and then um, it becomes a little bit more rural and then we go south into pierce county which is where tacoma is which is another large city with a huge port and they have Lewis McCord Joint uh, Army Air Force Base down there. So we have a lot of military presence uh, down south in Tacoma and that uh, can actually impact traffic quite a bit when we've got a lot of uh, guys and girls going in and out of the base during shift changes and those types of things. There are also a lot of military people uh, renting and buying homes in that area close to uh, Tacoma along I-5. Right. So again, you know, we're driving somewhere, <laughs> getting, uh, getting an idea of the surface streets, a lot of the kind of retail. Go past this light, then at the next one, turn right. The quality of the homes, the quality of the shops, uh, the sort of the quality of the neighborhood. So you get a, a sense that it's uh, it's mid-range. They have a lot of name brand At stuff. Light, turn right onto South Kent Des Moines Road. I'm gonna turn this off. Okay. Right there is the huge LA Fitness. This is kind of the Highway 168 that um, would take us over to I-5 and 405, where we'd get on the freeway to go up into the city, uh, north to Seattle on I-5, north to Bellevue on 405, or south to Tacoma on I-5. I-5 is Interstate 5, it's our big international freeway going from Canada through Washington, Oregon, and California all the way down to Mexico. And you can kind of see, you know, some of the lowlands here, it has an agricultural feel, but then there are like apartment buildings right over there. <laughs> so it's an interesting blend, a combination of developed and undeveloped land here, but very beautiful. It's October. We've got the trees starting to change color. This is the Evergreen State. And actually here down in Federal Way in Pierce County, a lot of the land uh, was owned by Weyerhaeuser, which is a big tree lumber company. And so they would basically own these forests, uh, cut the forest down for lumber, you know, sell the wood, that type of thing. And then afterwards, sometimes they would replant them. So sometimes they would replant the forests and grow their next crop of trees. Uh, sometimes they would sell off the land to be developed into housing developments, uh, you know, sometimes with 
you know, a certain number of trees needing to grow there, a certain, um, you know, space. Each person needed an acre or two of land for their home site. So Weyerhaeuser has been a huge land over, land owner over here and also kind of responsible for some of the developments, especially in the more rural areas. But as a huge business in the area, they've donated a lot of money and done a lot of different things. And you can certainly see in some of our parks here in the Pacific Northwest, some of the huge old growth uh, evergreen trees still around or uh, cool kind of stumps from them where you can see like lumberjack cutouts and things where they would uh, notch the trees to climb up them and, and be able to cut them down and harvest them. So uh, kind of an interesting, fun part of our history here in Western Washington. And I do feel bad for Eastern Washington. They are <laughs> part of the evergreen state that doesn't have any evergreens. <laughs> uh, it's a lot drier on the east side of the Cascade Mountains. So uh, Eastern Washington is very agricultural. That's where all of our apples are grown. There are a lot of orchards over there. Um, peaches, cherries, pears, uh, and they have a lot of rivers for hydroelectric, which are controversial because make the dams that we use to harvest the electricity from the water make it harder for salmon to get around and go upstream and spawn. So um, a lot of times people feel like there's kind of a clash between eastern part of the state and the western part of the state where um, the west tends to attract people or have more causes that are around uh, preservation of the watershed and uh, the animals, the flora and fauna, that type of thing, even though ironically this part is much more developed, much more concrete jungle type of thing. And then um, in the eastern part of the state you'll see a lot more uh, crops and kind of land being utilized for profit, but a lot less population density uh, for sure. Uh, in the farther eastern part of the state, uh, kind of farther from the mountains and the rivers, they have a lot of grain and just huge fields where um, yeah, grain and other crops are, are made. So if you drive, like say from Seattle over to Idaho, you can really get a feel for all of the different types of things that Washington does. But Western Washington is where all the rain falls that we kind of get it coming in off the ocean and those cascade mountains catch the clouds don't let them pass over the clouds kind of get stuck here and hang out until they get enough um, water in them to make it rain and that's why the seattle area is kind of known as being a rainier area okay now we're driving through some apartments and things it, it has more of a low rent feel you can see some lack of maintenance. No, there's a nice one. But over here, you know, I'm seeing some vandalism and graffiti and those types of things. That large building looks commercial. So we may be on the back side of a, a store. Oh no, I guess I can't get through this way. Okay, back on track. <laughs> um, it's a little mobile home park here, not as nice some roofer supply stuff and here we're we're actually coming up onto highway 99 known as aurora in seattle here it's known as pacific highway it's all the same thing you can see a boarded up place over there and i've talked about how in seattle uh, there's a sign talking about prostitution not being al allowed yeah so we've talked about in seattle how this area the street uh, tends to have more crime, prostitution, people making getaway runs on the bus <laughs> after, you know, holding up a Thai food restaurant or something like that. So, you know, it's different in different parts of town depending on uh, what municipality, what city jurisdiction it's in and how much crime is being monitored and that type of a thing. But in general, it's a, a busy street that moves a lot of traffic. It's a north-south street, uh, but it's not a super nice street in terms of uh, the kinds of businesses. Like there's a hotel motel up there. A lot of those can be used for prostitution and that type of thing. Here's a self-storage that looks 
nice and new and well kept. But um, the place we're going to now is just a block off of here. And um, so kind of the closer we are to streets like this, the more crime and problems we can tend to attract from just people kind of wandering off the street into the neighborhoods doing crime. Yay, over there I can actually see a water view. So the good thing about that is that that tends to raise property values. So even though we're close to Aurora here, as we get closer to the water, uh, things should tend to get a little nicer. We're just one block off of it now, Highway 99, and you can kind of see there's some nice sized homes. It seems like a reasonably well-kept area. It's just gonna be uh, more affordable. You're probably likely gonna have, you know, keep things out of your car, don't have car break-ins. I see there's a little sign over there about neighborhood meeting, which is nice sense of community and that type of thing. Water views over there. So even though we are close to Aurora, it doesn't mean that it's too terrible to live in. So this is kind of the neighborhood that we're looking at right now. Over there is Highway 99, which is not great. Uh, over here, kind of over those trees is Puget Sound, which is nice. Uh, and then here's the home. We're going to take a look at this home. It's an older home uh, with two levels. So you'll kind of get an idea for what you get. This one is priced at six hundred. And before we go in, I did want to point out the backyard. You do get a grassy area, but uh, you're here by these uh, apartments, which is uh, it was a downside for my clients as well as on the other side is a green space, which can be nice, but which can also attract you know homeless people and squatters and that type of thing. So as we step in the front door, we get this sweet little vignette with the living room and we do have real hardwood floors here. That's one of the nice things we often find in older homes is the real hardwood floors often hidden for years under carpets and then revealed to be in excellent shape. These look like they've actually been refinished, which is nice. Here's the dining room area and uh, you know, you can see big picture window here, view out to a lot of parking which is not great from the neighborhood perspective. Over here is kind of the galley kitchen in this era. This was a 1950s home. They kind of kept the kitchen tucked away. The mess is tucked away. They don't have a refrigerator in right now and they don't have a vent. So like for the stove, if you're making a lot of grease, they have this old fashioned ceiling vent, but you're gonna get quite a mess on these white cabinets. They have a nice uh, newer window here out overlooking the driveway. And And so here's the garage coming in. It's a one car garage with a little storage bench in the back, a little handle there. You can tell there's probably an elderly or disabled person living here. They have a few modifications to make that work. Here's the bathroom. Here's the bedroom. This is the larger bedroom upstairs here. Um, but in these older homes, we tend not to have very big closets. So this is probably a standard size closet, but if this is the primary suite, we don't have the ensuite bath. So you, everyone is sharing the same upstairs bathroom here. Here's the next one. Room for a single bed and a little bit smaller closet. Here's the third bedroom. Uh, not staged, but nice flooring and a moderately sized closet. So if this were my grandma's house, this would be all there was to it. Coat closet here and you're done. About a thousand square feet. In this case, they have been working on remodeling the downstairs but it's not really finished. So we have kind of a mix of things. So for example, they have new carpet here on the stairs and they have a fourth bedroom right here, which is actually a, a pretty decent setup. Uh, again, a smaller closet, but the space you need and a nice big private window. This looks like it's going to be the laundry room, 
but it's not quite ready to go. And then back here, they don't even have any light, so it's hard to tell what's going on. This is some sort of a utility room. So this is a bathroom that has a shower. And then this little <laughs> non-usable area over here. And uh, some understair storage. So this could be a nice additional bedroom. They might have even decided, you know, this was the closet. It has an ensuite bath. Um, and two doors. This was not going to be able to be used for much storage. It's got the furnace in there. So ensuite bathroom, kind of master bathroom, bedroom situation down here potentially. And then this is a nice big room, probably used as a rec room, TV room type of space. Another bedroom over here could be a home office. So this could work out really well as a second unit, like an apartment except that it's missing a kitchen. There's no cooking facility down here. But if you had uh, like a mother-in-law type of situation, they could live down here. Actually two people, two bedrooms are down here. Um, and it does have its own uh, patio access here. So just depending on your situation and the setup, this is what you get. We're a block off of Highway 99. We do have some low ceilings here because of vents, but it gives you, if you're renting a room or two, uh, it could be a good additional income opportunity. So thanks so much for joining me today as we kind of drive around Kent and Des Moines here in Western Washington. So if you were, you know, having one spouse commute up to Seattle and one down to Tacoma, this would be a great option. Uh, also, if you work in the SeaTac area, Boeing, uh, Renton, any of those places, uh, this is a great location as well. So just to give you an idea, uh, this was our drive around tour, going to some different places with a family that was looking for their first home. So I hope you really enjoyed it. If you're thinking about getting into this area and you want to know what some starter homes look like, what some nicer homes look like, we can definitely find uh, something that's going to be the right match for you of being in a a safe area away from some of the rental stuff, away from some of the uh, industrial stuff, away from some of the retail shopping and that type of a thing. But there are a lot of uh, different kind of spotty, sketchy areas. So that's why it pays to work with a local. We can kind of help uh, help you find something where you feel really comfortable and really good about it. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Emily Cressy. You can always join me on this channel, ask any questions that you may have about the different areas that we're touring. And if you'd like help finding your home, visit me on my website, homeproassociates.com, and I would be happy to connect with you. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll talk with you soon.